Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! And welcome to the Metal Voice. Today, I, he's the first time on the show, right, yes. Alan? Yes, yes. This the is a time. huge thrill for us. We've had Don. We've had Jeff Pilsen a few times, but George Lynch, he's the man. I mean, we, we we've go. been waiting for George. Yeah, it, it all kind of builds up to the, to the point, you know, where you get to actually talk to me, George, George. As my good yeah, friend yeah, Cork it's, says, this it's is like what the experience. Yeah, you'll, you'll find out in the course of the interview how amazing it's going to be. <laughs> the end machine, the end machine. I feel so thing. lucky for you guys. I'm happy for you guys to be able to talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> It's, I, it's, I know it's such a privilege for you. And, and you know, and, sometimes I do these interviews and people, you know, because I like doing them because I get to talk about myself a lot over and over again. Oh. But then there's these guys sometimes that they want to talk about themselves or something. And I, I, I can't even remember what they want to talk about because I usually just lose interest and go to sleep. We just, we just lost your George, video. George, we lost your video. We lost oh, your video. Oh, oh, oh yeah. That's you were, you were spounging up. There you go. Speaking of everything being my fault, yeah, that's so, my wife calling in. I so, George, probably... let's talk about me and Alan for a so while. So, George's <laughs> second best quality is his modesty, of course. <laughs> right. Well, it's it's, it's uh, false modesty. Okay. There you go. See, right. if, you, if, you, if you exercise false modesty, then people will... Oh, the, oh, the muffins uh, are ready. Oh, oh, dude, everything's my fault again. The muffins oh are ready in the oven. You might want to go check. That's, them. My, that's my wife texting me that every, just reminding me that it's that it's your fault. Friday and everything's still my fault. Right? <laughs> All right, enough about machine. enough about you. Enough about you, George. What about us? <laughs> no, no, enough about me. What do you think of me? <laughs> the end uh, machine phase two. Let's let's get into it. Launched today. Phase one, I guess, made our top. It made our top five list back in 2019. Now it was in 2019, so we're very anxious to hear phase two. Yeah, wait till you hear phase three. Okay, well, there is going to be a phase like, three. Is that what you're saying? Fifties percent better, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. What else are we going to do? You know, I mean, if I don't, if I don't keep making these records, I might have to get a real job. You know, yeah. people will be on to me. They'll be like, this guy, what's this guy doing? What's he really uh, up to? George yeah. Lynch. On guitars, Jeff Pilson on bass, Robert Mason Robert. on, uh, you know, of course, on vocals. And, and pardon now got, the pun, pardon the pun, without skipping a beat, Steve Brown on drums. It's the brother of Mick Brown. Yep. What so we refer to him as mild Steve Brown. Mild Steve Brown. It's kind of like Jason Bonham, the son of <laughs> mild John Steve Bonham. Bonham. It's, it's sort of like right. within the family, right? You're keeping it within the family. Yeah. Um, eventually... All our younger brothers will be in the band, and there won't be any original guys left. And then they'll send us a check. Well, that's actually our five o'clock show today. Is is a, if the original members aren't part of a band, is there still is it still considered the the real band? So, so I don't know. Is the real band considered the real band? If no, yeah. I mean, if every you know, if everything, if every molecule in your body has changed numerous times since the 80s then are you still the real band yeah real band. Good I don't know what real band had to find real band you know yeah exactly but look let's get back to phase two blood and money what a way to open the album and i mean your soloing on that song says it all it sets the tone for the rest of the album I mean, we'll just, yeah what i what, what we set out to do with that solo was create the world's longest most tedious guitar solo <laughs> It really it's, got everything. it's got everything you want is right there yeah it was really out to prove something you know that you know i, I don't know i don't know i'm sure what i was trying to prove but uh i think it has you know I, I noticed people listening to it looking at their watches a lot i don't know if that means anything uh, I, I don't think know it's about great. That. i think it's great but that's just my opinion and i'm always wrong so you know well, you're you're usually wrong and your wife will probably attest to that <laughs> <laughs> one of them <laughs> um yeah all of them. <laughs> um, like when I put this on, I didn't think it was docking. That's the last thing I thought it was. Was it intentionally supposed to sound like docking, or is it just another beast? Uh, well, we set out to recreate the, the 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 chemistry and the mentality of the writing process uh, and the compositional 
chemistry that Jeff and I had and the things around us and the things that we thought about and, and uh, uh, the things that were, you know, had carried more weight, like uh, in the writing process. So that's what we tried to recreate, not necessarily plagiarizing Dawkins songs or sounds, uh, but just being in that frame of mind. And I think we did a good job of that. And in other words, uh, when formulating the, the, the song structures, we kind of, you know, in more recent years, sometimes we, we, we've sort of uh, defaulted to this position of, you know, well, we've done all these more basic kind of records in the past, you know, decades, and, and we've established we can do that. So we need to prove that we're geniuses or really smart or whatever the hell, <laughs> you know, and we can do other things and like play in different time signatures and go out of key and play to changes and whatever, you know, be interesting. And that's all, that's all wonderful. And we did more of that with the first the end machine record. I mean, that was, was kind of, you know, whatever it was, a, it was a mix. It was a lot of different elements on that record. It's very interesting. And I love it. But then we decided on this record to go back and place more importance on the fundamentals, like uh, having as good a hook, as big a hook as possible, memorable sing-along hooks, you know, and so people, you know, really easy to digest the name of the song, the title of the song and what the chorus is, and, uh, and then have easily accessible and digestible, you know, like tempos and, and structures, you know, A, B, C, A, B, C, bridge, A, C, you know, whatever it is. I mean, it's a real tried and true, simple Western music formula for Western pop music and rock music. And, and we just kind of went back to that um, with some, you know, some other things in there of course you know didn't make it completely dumb but uh you know uh, really i think when it comes down to it is just giving the majority of people what they want and in some sense we are selling a product and it become really challenging for us in later years to you know recreate that thing that people know and love about what we do or have done in the past you know because we're constantly hearing these complaints is okay, well, you're reinventing yourself and you do all these other things, but what about the core thing that you're known for? How come you don't do that anymore? We want that. So we had to address that and it's been challenging. It's hard to do. It's probably the hardest thing for me to do. And I think for Jeff, I can speak for Jeff as well, is to recreate something that we were 35 years ago. Yeah. Very, very difficult to do that. And I've tried it before and, and not succeeded where I've had better success at reinventing myself and doing other styles. For instance, I've got a project called the banishment I've been working on for many years and that's very industrial esque and I love it. And it's dark and it's heavy and it's got all this, you know, all this density to it. And, and uh, that's completely on the other side of the planet than, you know, you know, my legacy stuff, but I found it easier to fit into that than it is for me to go back and recreate, recreate an Ebony's 80 style, composition well so. no thanks for confirming that because that's exactly what i took away from this album what the what was so different on the first one is is really gone back to what i call you know meat and potatoes on, uh, on this phase too so uh but again you know some some of the great tracks and, and talking about the 80s i mean i'm, I'm listening to devil's pay, playground and, and you got robert mason in the middle with his little uh, rap there and you know you know, the whole party scene, the whole coked up party attitude of the 80s is kind of summarized in that song. Uh, were you ever, you know, you're a healthy guy. You've always taken care of yourself. Were you ever part of that scene in the 80s? Oh, absolutely. I was the main guy. <laughs> you're the guy. Let's make an scene. album. Let's make scene. an album. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, you guys, well, well, you guys want some coke? Is that <laughs> here? Oh, no. Yeah, it's. I think it's illegal in Canada, right? Still. Oh. Weed is that legal. Is, yeah. Weed is legal. <laughs> we coke will be legal soon. So <laughs> stand by. What's, what's weed? Is it like coke? Yeah, I don't know. It's like coke. I don't, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's a scene from uh, that the Steve Martin, Martin Short movie, uh, for, uh, uh, the Three Amigos. The Three Amigos. Where they're in the bar, and and he and he wanted some milk, and they, we don't have milk. He goes, well, "What do you have?" He goes. Uh, he goes, well, I'll have a beer. He goes, we don't have beer. He goes, what do you have? He goes, I got tequila. He goes, what's that? He goes, it's like beer. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's like milk. <laughs> All I remember is that long note. We are the three amigos, and they sustain it for about you know two minutes. That's what yeah. I remember from that movie. Yeah, it's one of those movies when you're like kind of just uh, had it up to here with kind of everything. 
you know, just for something light, you know, just go back and watch it for the 20th time. It's pretty funny. You know what, you know what I hear about in this album, George, I hear uh, white snake. I hear dual guitars like maiden. I hear a little bit of Queens, right? Sometimes with the sound effects coming in and out. Mm. I don't hear Dawkin. Maybe one song kind of sounds or reminds me of Dawkin, like shine your light. Mm. That I, Am I right about this? Is there just infused with different sort of influences? Sure. I mean, it always has. All the Dawkins stuff was just wasn't, I mean, Dawkins wasn't a pure thing. Dawkins was uh, just a bunch of other influences. It was a whole lot of Judas Priest in Dawkins. It was okay. easy. Uh, um, and, and you name it, I mean, just about anything, you know, that you could pull from, from our respective uh, influences um, in the late 60s and all through the 70s and even contemporary bands at the time that were influencing us. You know. So, um, we weren't immune from influence. I mean, that's all Dawkins is an amalgamation of all our influences and continued and everything we create now is a continuation of that. And Dawkins is one of our influences. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. <laughs> full, circle, full circle. Full circle. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a, 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 like a hall of mirrors, you know, infinite mirrors. But I mean, you know, you got lynch mob, you did stuff with Michael Sweet. Uh, I mean, what's next for you? Like, you, you, how many times can you reinvent yourself, like you said earlier? Well, I don't really reinvent myself. I mean, I'm really just sitting here doing the same thing on that I do on every record. The only difference is uh, the style will tend to change in my based on who I'm working with and, and what the idea of the music is. And that's usually just dictated by the people in the band. So when I work with like Project Infidelica or, or Ultraphonics, um, you know, that's a whole funkier thing, right? So the guys are, you know, Poncho Tomaselli from War is coming in and, you know, uh, Angelo Moore from Fishbone is in the band, you know, so yeah. that's, we're not going to play Iron Maiden stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or we might take, I might bring something to the table that's kind of hard rock like that, you know, typical thing that I do. But in that context, it becomes something totally different, you know, because you got a diff, you know, you got a drummer that's playing funky and you got a bass player that's, you know, playing latin funk and soul and r&b stuff and and a singer that's freaking doing ska <laughs> so uh same thing with kxm i mean you gotta you know i'm playing with ray lazier who's a completely different kind of drummer than i've ever played with you know he's he's the opposite of like a bonham kind of guy he's just i don't even know what you call it but it, it's very syncopated and mathematical and 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 uh, very cerebral and a lot of different you know time changes and it's challenging for me and i love that and of course doug is this different kind of a bass player that that has this very unique sound and style and so you bring all that together and i just react to that and play a different way i go okay i need to tailor my sound to that this requires something a little different so i'm going to use these amps and these guitars and stylistically i push myself and i go okay well a four 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 you know, kind of typical rock riff isn't going to work here. What do I do to fuck that up and make it a little more interesting and challenging? And so, you know, being an unschooled player, theory-wise, I, I just sort of make up stuff. Quite George, honestly, that's all there is to it. George, you were the guitarist that influenced thousands upon thousands of guitarists. You know, sort of like Randy Rhodes. And what was your connection did did he actually did you actually go to Musonia? Were you actually schooled there, or did you take some lessons there? Or no, I taught there. Oh, you taught there. So yeah. did you have any connection with Randy Rhodes? Did you back yeah. in the day? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, we play shows together frequently. We rehearsed uh, in the same rehearsal facility and shared the same room, so we had a lot of opportunities to hang out and. Um, you know, share licks and talk occasionally. Uh, we weren't like friends or anything, but we were in the same business and we ran in the same circles and ran into each other all the time. Uh, and from, you know, I mean, I've known that he appreciated my playing and liked my playing and he would bring people to see me frequently and including his mom. <laughs> and uh, we were both up for Ozzy uh, a number of times and, and I was up for three three different occasions. And one of them was the time that Randy got it over me. And then uh, the understanding was that between whichever one of us got it, the other one would teach at Musonia. 
Oh, okay. Well, I got the consolation prize. And uh, yeah, so, but um, he told his mom that if anything ever, you know, happened with him, that he would want me to maybe fill in if possible, if I'd be willing to. So I did. Uh, and also, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I had a complicated experience with Musonia. One of the things that I noticed was that he had all these students and a lot of them were girls and they were just there to kind of look at him. And then when I showed up, they quit. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm cute and have the bow tie and all the polka dots. So, polka dots, yeah. I was I there. Actually, I was like, there. Trying to learn and, you know, girls get mad when you try to bend their fingers. So they go, you know, damn. And I, I got real patient with beginners. And, so whatever we Take live and learn <laughs> yeah i got a little bit of cool story yeah no i've been to musonia you know I, I met kelly rhodes kathy interviewed them both and uh you know i and and i look at you sort of like the randy rhodes of another generation you know it's completely like when i was growing up there was so many guitarists that were influenced by you it's just it's just, it's unbelievable how many guitars were in this way. That's what I just want to tell you. Hmm. If every one of those guys would send me a dollar. See, that would be great. Be really cool. <laughs> uh, right. George Lynch, care of. <laughs> yeah, just, just, you know, show a little appreciation. Hello, God. <laughs> Yeah, but it was it was on the internet today. I kind of saw it. there were people were trying to get you know trying to get paid. And are you guys still getting paid from everything there was in the docking era, or is that a problem for you? Or no, I mean it's always a challenge, you know, because music industry is not really built to uh, trickle down too much to the musicians. <laughs> yeah, kind of, it's kind of built to kind of reward everyone else, you know, the the third party types and the the, the you know the other parts of the machine. And we're usually sort of a, a footnote and an afterthought, even though we're the creators yeah. of everything that it's built on. Uh, it's very unfortunate, but it's just a really uh, indicative of the larger economic system that, you know, the Western world is built on, or most of the world, I imagine, at this point. Um, you know, rewards capital and not labor, not necessarily ideas and people are actually doing the work, you know. Um, when a guy takes a pick, picks up a pick and goes down into the mine, I mean, you know, he's working for the, he's working for the man. <laughs> yeah. It's always a challenge, you know, to, to, I mean, we're going, that's part of the business, the other side of the coin again, you know, you got all this stuff that we love, you know, creating music and playing and everything. We just, we love that. But then there's the practical side on the other side, which is, it's tough. You know, it's tough to make sure that you're uh, getting treated fairly. And it's a constant um, thing that you have to police and, and, and work on because it's not something any of us really want to deal with. <laughs> no, yeah. But you have to, you know, it's just being responsible and, and educating yourself uh, as to how it all works. All right. Alan? Well, just no, just to get back to the album here, uh, you know. Uh, We're going to go off on different tangents here, George. Shine, We're just shine like your flying light, off you know? everywhere. Shine your light, take me out of the darkness. You guys always that's... fight like this? Is this normal? Yeah, yeah it is. It yeah, is. We, yeah, We've been doing it for 10 years. Ten it's years. kind of uncomfortable when you guys are bickering, you know, <laughs> in the same room. Yeah. It's you know, like ten a married years. couple. 10 years. 10 years, yeah. Ten years. <laughs> I, I noticed how you guys finish each other's sentences. It's <laughs> I can tell that he completes you. Yes. Well, a little bit, well let's yes. not get carried away here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, hey, I complete him. Canada, what happens in Canada stays in Canada. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny, George? We actually live 10 minutes away from each other, but here we are on Zoom. Wow. Yeah, I'm about the same way with Pilsen. I mean, he lives just down the street, but with the pandemic, we had to work, couldn't work together. So it was Zoom. Oh, wow. He, just, he finally, we're both, we're both inoculated completely, you know, fully and Oh, he really? came over the day, a couple days ago, and we, it was the first time we actually were in a room together. Uh, Two doses? Out. Two doses? Yeah. yeah. We haven't even started on one dose here. So. Oh, man. As much Thank as you were saying Canada, Canada, you know, we haven't even gotten dose one yet. The whole country? It's no, uh, uh, we're at 20% of the population, maybe. They're oh, still so at the 60, six, they're at 55 and over, maybe like 60 and over. One dose yep. one. Dose one. 
that's why God invented fake IDs. <laughs> Here's this. That's, that's like the opposite. opposite thing, thing. Thing. That's the opposite. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So uh, just for the album itself, I mean, like, look, uh, you know, Destiny, take the song Destiny, you know, you, you, can, can we change our destiny? Do you, do, what do you think about that? Is that something we can do or we're predetermined? I mean, uh, sure I, I, think, I think the problem is that half the population of the planet can and half is reluctant. Maybe that's not exactly half. And I just think it's people are predisposed to, you know, being their brains are wired in a certain way <laughs> their frontal the prefrontal cortexes uh, uh, can uh, you know empathize and feel compassion or 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 they're or it's driven by fear and greed so i don't know i i don't have much hope for rewiring people's brains um, if you, you can't talk them into you you can't talk a brain into being into rewiring itself by using facts unfortunately so what about uh, dark divide i guess that's a uh... The, the political climate of the U.S., I, I would think. Yeah, polarization that, that uh, although it's an optimistic song, uh, uh, in reality, I think it's the same problem. If, it, if it's, you know, if the polarization is, is woven into the fabric of the human psyche, then I, how do you fix that? Okay. Yeah, it's not easy for sure. Scars, uh, scars. I mean, that's a great bluesy feel, I find, to that, that song as well. Uh, just like a melodramatic, dark, kind of unrequited love song, I guess. Or maybe not unrequited, I'm sorry. And again, um, these, uh, you know, the lyrics were written by the three of us. Okay. But the guy that was really, you know, we all sat together in Zoom and collaborated. But, well, oh, lost, yeah. Lost George video. is being asked to pick up the milk now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the milk. Uh, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. The three of you were writing the lyrics, so you're finishing finishing oh, each oh, other's but, sentences. Yeah, right. But the you know it it really uh, I don't know if you guys talked to Robert Mason or Jeff Pilson, but um, you know uh, they're a lot more invested in the you know the thought process behind the, uh, what the lyrics are all about. Um, I was there, but I just kind of walked away from what was over and. I don't really think about it after that. So, <laughs> put in my two cents. So you, you know, I'm not, I'm not the authority on all things, uh, and machine lyrics. All right. Well, you know what? I think we're at time and uh, the end machine, April 9th. I'm not sure if it's going to come out today. This video, but it'll come out in a few days. So we'll just say it's released now. Uh, phase two, pick it up. It's it's nice to hear. It's and by the way, Jeff Pilson does an excellent job on the production. It's all right. Yeah. So, get back to talk to you about George. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I, I'm sorry, I fell asleep. What'd you say? Yeah. We're talking about Jeff now. I lost you. Yeah, you kind of lost me at Jeff Pilson. I was just, I, I was started, saw some little sparkly things in the horizon, caught my what? attention. <laughs> One of the most distinguished sounds guitar sounds ever we got him play with us today george lynch want to just thank you for tuning in and uh man oh we should do this more often it's just there's a pleasure having you on the show here today hey could you do me a favor uh, while we're at before i hang up um could you invade the united states <laughs> yeah, just conquer with snowballs with snowballs little, what do you how do you want us country? to do that though so we can get that good health care and then the happy <laughs> Canadian thing will kind of by osmosis. We'll, sort we'll bombard of you with maple syrup. Oh, I, my God. Thank I you. Think, I think we have one submarine. I think we have a submarine. We could put our subs together and have like a, a peace navy. we we'll go around and do good stuff, you know, instead of kill people and shit. Like save the beluga whales or something. I don't know. It's getting better there, George. It's getting better. So it's all, it's all good. <laughs> we'll start with saving the gay whales. <laughs> branch out. I don't know, dude. I'm just just footballing right now. You know what? It'd be good if Canada invades the U.S. Yeah, that'd be not. It's not a bad plan. Or you could join us. Expecting it. Nobody's expecting it. Exactly. No, no, that would. I mean, unless they're watching this. Are we still recording? Oh, We're shit. still recording. Uh oh. But it's not live, so we can cut that part out. And yeah, we can, be careful. Oh. And uh, I'm going to be. Oh, now we're going to get in trouble for something. I don't know, sedition. Well, yeah, you'll get some good health care. Some good health care. Oh, it wants me that maybe want me some of that good Canadian 100% health care. 
That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. if we either we'll get in trouble for trying to overthrow the United States via Canada, or if Canada wins, we'll probably be in charge because our yeah. idea. Yeah. So I'll be like the king. You be the prime minister. And I'll you be the jester. Whatever you want. <laughs> No, I just want to be treasure. Yeah. You know what happens, George? You've been doing so many of these interviews that you're trying to change it up. You know, you just don't want to stick to that same sort of format, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. What size talking... pick you use? Is Don an asshole? How's it like being in Dawkins? <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We didn't ask any of those questions, so that's I know. why we got we got turned on. To you know, George, uh, invading, and I'll, invading I'll, the USA. Thank George, you so much, George, for being on the show. You. And the invasion. Sure. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> We'll, yeah, send the, gotta, we'll send you the we'll send you the plans. We got to figure out, you know. We'll call you when we're ready. And... Us Canadians are very relaxed. It might take a you while. Have, <laughs> you guys have any guns? So you have to like bring slingshots and BB guns and shit. But peace, cheers. At McDonald's. All right, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, take care, guys. guys.